Long-term food options. Let's talk about it. So as far as long-term food, there's a couple different routes we can go. And the two big paths we can take is long-term long -term food storage and food production. So you'll see there's people in different camps and you'll see people that are doing both. Uh, it, it depends on a lot of factors, uh, what resources you have available, what you're preparing for, uh, things like that. But reality is, for me, the goal is both. Um, I started out doing long-term food storage. So uh, food, water, uh, shelter, right? Some these are some of the things that are essential for, for long-term survival or for survival period. Um, you're not going to get very far without clean drinking water. But um, so for long-term, if we're talking months and years, perhaps decades, well, that food's got to come from somewhere. So you will have, uh, you know, the camp where, People will store up a bunch of food. You have people that will that will start homesteads, produce their own. You know, I started out storing food, and and it started with a couple factors. For one, I was broke. I lived in a 550 square foot apartment, so I didn't really have the ability, obviously, to produce my own food. Uh, and the great thing with food storage is you can start small, you can scale it. I started out with a two extra uh, canned food, uh, cans of food. Every week, I do grocery shopping Friday or Saturday. You know, single money was tight. Typically, most cans of food are about a dollar. Well, I can absorb two extra dollars a week in my budget. And that's what I did. And so, in, in the food storage, you know, we've got a we've got a video called On Food. Everything from MREs, freeze dried meal, canned food that we rotate through. Recently, I've also started canning, so I, I, I can make jams, can stuff. I put that away; it's shelf stable. Um, but that's how I started. The Again, the great thing with that is anybody can start. You can start moving in a direction without committing too many resources. You don't have to put all your eggs in one basket right away. So even if you don't know which direction you're going to go and what exactly you're preparing for, maybe you just have this urge that you, you need to start preparing and, and, and things are not going to um, go well in the long term or, you know, this, 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 uh, I'm trying to formulate my thoughts. This, this time of abundance might come to an end, right? Well, pretty much no matter what direction you go, starting baby steps, store, starting to store some food, a rotating pantry, uh, we really can't go wrong there. Um, be careful with the freeze-dried meals. Pay attention to the calories and the portions that they've allotted per day. Generally speaking, those meal packs will not last you as long as they say it will, okay? I like Mountain House because typically those meal packs are just full of uh, the camping meals that they sell people in the ready-made pouches. It's a lot easier to manage. Now, you might say, Gil, you said you started with storing food, and, and so what are you doing now? Well, for me, long-term, sustainability equals food production. Um, you know, if I won the lottery, if I had a lot of money, yes, theoretically, I could store enough food, put it away in a bunker. I could do the, the, the number 10 cans. You know, and if I store enough for 50, 60 years, let, let's say I just, I say, you know what? Um, I'm going to put away for a family of four, for a family of six, enough for 30 years. Or let's say 25 years because a lot of this has a 25-year shelf life. Okay, theoretically, then yeah, um, I, I should have enough, right? But remember too is with food storage, as soon as you start dipping into that food storage, there's a timer that starts. Um, that timer, once it reaches zero, you run out of food. So, and for me, the reality is I don't have that kind of money. And you guys out there probably don't either. And um, and even if you did, you have to do a cost-benefit analysis. And you start looking at how much money would I have to spend versus what would I get. Uh, it's not the best purchase. So, sustainability equals food production. Especially with what we're looking, the economic future that we're looking at. And, and, and that's really what brought us to buying acreage. And my goal now is to try to produce food. So, what the food storage now turns into is a uh, uh, a food reserve, a buffer. Okay, so right now it, it's food production is not anywhere near where it needs to be. Okay, hopefully in a couple of years, as we go through a few growing cycles, we get good food production. But what that also means too is if we're caught in between seasons or whatever, or, or if I'm let's say I'm only producing food for a fraction of what I need, just because it takes time and energy to do that. 
uh, I might need time to ramp up fruit production or if I'm in between seasons. That food storage is always there. It's always available. And it means that it gives me time to figure out problems with my fruit production or to make changes. Again, because once I, once I dip into that, the clock is ticking. It also is a reserve that I can replenish depending on, let's say, the economy gets bad and there's massive food shortages and there's, let's say, uh, a month where basically I can't get anything in the grocery store and then things get better for a bit and then I can replenish a little bit and then it gets bad again, right? It, it's a reserve that I can play with um, if things got really bad. Because remember, SHGF does not necessarily mean you wake up one morning and civilization's gone. I mean, that's what a lot of people take it to mean, but in reality, uh, that's probably the lowest percentage scenario there is. There's so many, there's so many different other ways that things can go wrong. Okay, um, and so it gives me that ability. And so now it's the reserve, and my main focus would be or is to create a system uh, on the homestead uh, to basically produce as much of my own stuff as I can, whether that's um, um, you know, chicken eggs and vegetables, fruit. Some people might choose to do livestock and, and, and pigs and, and cows and some people might not. You know, we're dealing with that uh, equation right now. Uh, I'm thinking about is it worth long term or is it worth eventually getting like miniature cows to get slaughtered eventually? There's a lot of infrastructure that goes into that. And if I already build relationships with people that are already doing that, it might be more beneficial just to focus on other things that we can trade so I can grow things that they don't have and I can make products with that like jams and whatnot that they, they don't have um you know so that's a problem that everyone's got to figure out but long-term sustainability when i hear that i think food production and the cool thing is it works for everything um really whether you're talking about emp you're talking about uh economic collapse let's say the great depression comes all over again uh hyperinflation uh, a situation like venezuela uh, or if it's just massive supply supply chain disruptions, grid collapse, whatever, um, it pretty much works for most for most scenarios. You know, if the Yellowstone super volcano goes, yeah, you're not producing nearly as much food as you used to, and you got all kinds of other problems, all right? If half the country's nuked, most people live close enough to your major city, you might have problems. Although if you don't, uh, there's definitely some of you guys out there that don't, and and you just be fine depending on where the jet stream carries uh, fallout and whatnot but it works for most uh, most scenarios and that's a good thing is you know being prepared means being adaptable it means being prepared for a wide range of scenarios you don't want to be just hyper focused on this one thing because the reason why we're being prepared is because of the unpredictability of life right and and dealing with that means we need to be adaptable and so that's a good thing um, that is the big benefit of of, of that you can it can be changed so you could change your your, your food production um, if you let's say you're going to build a homestead and you want to be as sustainable as you can uh, that can be changed depending on what you are trying to prepare for and then also you know you could use it as another income stream that's one of our plans is you know, we're, we're going over different ways to manage this and uh, we're thinking well i could produce let's say a third or a half of what our food production would have to be to actually feed the family and then if things got bad, I would just ramp up production. That's one way of doing it. Or I could also operate at almost full capacity and you know sell my product at farmers markets and things like that. Try to turn it into a business where I am I'm making products with like the fruits, for example. I'm selling fresh vegetables. I'm I'm, I'm doing the whole farm to table thing. Um, so that's other another aspect. You might find that you enjoy doing this, and you could. Uh, build a business where maybe it supplies your whole income. Maybe it just pays for prepping and the farm pays for itself. That alone, because when you guys start doing this, you'll you'll find out uh, it costs money. And uh, shoot, if you could pay or if you could sell enough stuff just to pay the expenses of producing the food, that's a win-win right there. Um, and so that, that's a big benefit. Um, and that's one of the things conceptually, I think, that'll work. <laughs> We're, we are in the early process of, of putting that in action so we'll, we'll find out right but in a nutshell that, that those are my thoughts on, on the food storage versus production um you know you everyone can start with food storage there should be some element of food storage um and it's also scalable anyone can do it at any level of preparedness but to me long-term sustainability means i've got to start producing my own food so uh drop your comments down below let me know what you think go ahead and, and uh, like and share and 
you know, I want to see some uh, some discussion in the in the comments. Um, stay safe, stay prepared.